Good evening. Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Sesum. I am the senior pastor of Bethesda Revival Center. We're located in the city of Riverside. Our address is 16681 Wood Road. Once again, that's in the city of Riverside, 92508. We have been doing an exhaustive study. Amen. Uh, first of all, want, let me say welcome to our Bible study, our weekly Bible study. Praise the Lord. We have been doing a, an exhaustive, total immersion type of study on the fact that we are uh, heirs of God. Amen. And the purpose of this study is to uh, renew our minds to the fact that that we are in fact heirs of God. We have to re and we need to renew our minds and see ourselves. Amen. As amen. Heirs of God. Praise the Lord. We have to see ourselves. Amen. Someone uh, mentioned revelation and what revelation, not the book of revelation, but when we receive revelation from God. Revelation is when you hear something, it causes you to see what you hear. We endeavor to totally immerse ourselves in this study, in this reality, amen, that we can see ourselves as heirs of God, amen. So we have that revelation, and you know how the Bible, what the Bible says about revelation. Uh, God told Peter, he says, uh, only my father revealed my identity to you, amen. He says, and as a result, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, amen, glory to God. And so when you receive revelation, the gates of hell cannot prevail against you. Praise God. It cannot win. Amen. Because you know who you are. So we're renewing our mind to that. And we're receiving revelation to the fact that we are heirs of God. Secondly, it's we're, we're endeavoring to discover what is in fact included in our inheritance. Amen. And last but not least, we are learning how to take possession of our inheritance now. Amen, somebody. Ooh, that's too much. Amen. Our inheritance now. Praise God. I got my finger a little too heavy for it. Amen. Glory to God. Before we go uh, further, uh, I want to read from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Verse, uh, uh, yeah, verse, chapter 1, verse 15 through 19. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, there it is, in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what the ex what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him up from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for another opportunity to study the word of the kingdom with these, your beloved people. God, I ask your anointing upon me, glory to God, that I may be successful, if Father God, in this endeavor. God, I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that those that would view this and listen to this, would do this lesson, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, we come against every foe to faith, any spirit that would try to hinder us. We rebuke and cast down, and we thank you, Father, for good success in this endeavor. And those that agree, shout amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, those that uh, studied with us last week, if you recall, we uh, went through a battery of Old Testament scriptures, amen, uh, uh, on, as we would uh, endeavor to know our inheritance. Well, tonight what we're going to do, we're going to go through uh, a battery of New Testament scriptures, amen, praise the Lord. And so 
If you have your Bibles, amen, we want to start this off in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 25. Now, if I <clears throat> am going too fast for you, my suggestion would be for you to, in fact, write the scriptures down uh, and in your personal uh, Bible study time, you go and uh, look up the scriptures for yourself. Now, I'm going to be using several translations tonight, uh, mainly the King James Bible. That's our, amen, our standard, amen, glory to God. But uh, we also will be using the NIV, uh, the Amplified, uh, and the New Living Translation, to name a few. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you can always go uh, to the internet and find those translations if you don't have uh, a library or different types of Bibles for yourself to uh, study. Amen. Uh, we're in the book of Matthew chapter 25. And for those that's just now signing on, we want to welcome you to our weekly Bible study. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Matthew chapter 25. Uh, and verse, I'm going to read from verse 31. I'll start there. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Mm -hmm. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. This is dealing with the judgment of the Gentiles. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand. This is where we want to camp out at for right now. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand. Come, ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Now, as I've said before, amen, uh, some people, well, it, in, in, in times past, we looked forward, amen, to, amen, receiving our inheritance in the sweet by and by only. Amen. Now, this scripture does, in fact, uh, speak to, amen, that reality that when we get to heaven, there's a kingdom that we are to inherit. But the bottom line is, the truth of the matter is, if you can receive revelation, there is kingdom that we're supposed to be setting up right here on earth. It's a spiritual kingdom. Come on, somebody. It's, 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 it's a kingdom that's set up by faith. Amen. It's a, it's, a, it's a kingdom that takes some adjustments, amen, in your thinking and your expectation, amen. It takes some adjustments, amen. We have to uh, be honest with ourselves. We, the society we live in, the Bible says that in the last days, men are going to run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. Well, you can find the news on your cell phone. And, and so you know, you hear what I'm saying? And so the news tends to, is, is a, a means in which uh, government or the prince of this world set, tries to set up uh, belief systems or structures in your heart and in my heart. And by meditating on the word, by studying the word, we become kingdom minded. We become kingdom minded. Amen. What I'm what I'm saying is Jesus said, give uh, Caesar what's his, but also give God what's his. You have got to endeavor, come on somebody, to give that part, give your, give your life over to the bulk of you. Come on, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. That's the, I mean, the God, in so many different ways, God tells us we have to seek kingdom, not seek government, not seek Republican or Democrat, seek kingdom. Are you with me? Can I say that much? I don't want to camp out on that because we have so much more ground to cover. But I'm saying you must endeavor to 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 set up a structure in your uh, own life 
that's a, a, a mind, a kingdom minded structure within you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus being our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. Now, that same verse, verse 34 out of Matthew uh, 25 and verse 34, once again, uh, I'm going to read it from the NIV and the Amplified. The NIV says, then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation or since the creation of the world. Come on, since the creation of the world. The Amplified reads it this way. Then the king will say to those on at his right hand. I'll say that again. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father. And then this parenthesis, you favored of God and appointed to eternal salvation. Mm -hmm. Inherit, receive as your own the kingdom prepared prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Praise the Lord. Now, once again, we have to become kingdom minded. Now, I understand in America's political system, we have mainly, we, 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 we really have three different parties, but the major two parties are the Democrats and the Republicans. But then there's another party we call the independents. Amen. Glory to God. Now, the Republicans like to say they're on the right. The Democrats try to say that they're on the left. All right. Now, here's the issue. The reason I want to say this is because someone who's not familiar with kingdom and kingdom speak. Amen. I, I was I was talking to someone or watching someone. I was conversing with someone uh, a, a, a year and a half, two years ago, and they saw this and they were saying, yeah, see, on the right hand, we're supposed to be Republicans. And I'm like, I, I didn't even know how to answer that. I'm like, my God, you know, that's not what this is talking about. All right. This is not talk what that's talking about. It's talking about righteous versus unrighteous. That's what that's dealing with. It's talking about those that have, who have received Christ as their savior and those who have not. All right. That's what this is talking about. All right. Let's go to another place. Let's go to Romans chapter 14. Just thought I'd throw it in there. I got all these bookmarks. Romans chapter 14. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 17 from the King James Bible. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Mm -hmm. It's not food. It is but righteousness. See? Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Look what it says. For he that in these things serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So in knowing our inheritance according to the New Testament or the new covenant or new contract we, that we have with God, amen, one thing we inherit is the kingdom. Amen. We inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Let's go to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Praise God. Romans chapter 4. Um, verse 13. For the promise that he should be the heir of See it again? The heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law or through the Old Testament, but through the righteousness of faith. It takes faith to see the kingdom. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promises made of none effect. Amen. In other words, we don't work to get in the kingdom. We don't work for this. This is by faith. Amen. Now, the e English Standard Version of Romans 4, 13 and 14 reads this way. For the promise to Abraham and his 
offspring, that he would be heir of the world, did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For it is, excuse me, for if it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is in fact void. Amen. So in knowing our inheritance, amen, according to New Testament scriptures, based on what we just read, we are, we inherit the world. Amen. Glory to God. The world. Now, I know oftentimes when we preach, we make a distinction between kingdom and the world. Let's see what it's talking about when, in this case when we use the word world. In, the, in this case, the, world, the word world from the Greek is cosmos. Cosmos, K-O-S-M-O-S, -O -S. amen. And it talks, and it's really dealing with the arrangement, the order of government. It's talking about a government. It's talking about arrangement. It's talking about order. Matter of fact, that's what government is supposed to do. It's supposed to bring structure. It's supposed, come on somebody, it's supposed to give order. That's why you see uh, uh, nations where when the government is toppled, there's all type of civil unrest. There's all type of confusion. There's all kinds of instability because government is supposed to provide orderly arrangement of things. Come on, structure. Amen. Another word for cosmos is the adornment, the decorate, the arrangement of things. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. And so the word of God says we're, to, we're supposed to inherit that. Come on. That's our portion. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go. Let's keep going. Titus. Amen. Let's go to Titus right after Timothy. Thank you, Jesus. Titus. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Titus chapter three. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. When you have it, say amen. Mm. Let me make sure I got this. Oh, no wonder it didn't look right. <laughs> I was in Timothy. I'm like, whoa, I'm having some problems with this. Okay, here we go. Um, verse four, but after that, the kindness and love of, I, I'll start from verse one, Titus chapter three, verse one, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness with all, unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Now, what uh, the author is speaking toward, he's dealing with our lifestyle, amen, our activities, prior to our being saved, prior to our receiving Christ. Amen. This letter from Paul. Amen. He's talking, this is what he's talking about. And then, then prove it. Look at verse four. It says, but after that, the kindness and love of God, our savior toward man appeared, come on, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. Come on. Uh-huh. Not by works of righteousness. Which we, we, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Look at verse six and seven, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified or placed in rights, de declared righteous, being justified by his grace, we should be made, once again, watch this, 
heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So part of our uh, inheritance is once again, eternal life. Amen. Glory to God. Now, when we deal with uh, eternal life, we're dealing with both quantity and quality of life. There's a certain quality of life that you and I ex should be ex should expect to live, a certain quality, amen, because we are in fact children of God. Now, I'm not talking about being lifted up in pride. No, I'm not talking about that. I am talking about we're having the badge on us that we are in fact children of God. Glory to God. We, having a testimony, being a testament, being a living epistle to be read of all men. Come on, somebody, where somebody can look at you and say there's something or observe your lifestyle and say there's something different about that individual. Come on, somebody, and they should desire what you have. That's your testimony. You should have a testimony. Amen. So we're dealing with quality and quantity. Eternal, talking about eternal life with Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. And it also is speaking to the quality of life we are to live uh, here on earth, you know, experience here on earth. That's why the Bible says if we seek first the kingdom of God and all his, and his righteousness, all these things, what things? God says, I'll prepare, I'll, I'll make sure you're fed. I'll make sure you're clothed. I'll make sure you've got a roof over your head. He said, we, we, those things we shouldn't even have to worry about. Come on, somebody. He said, those are the things that Gentiles seek after. When he was saying the Gentiles, he was saying individuals, he was really meaning individuals who had no relationship with him, who had no covenant. But now we have a covenant with him. Come on, somebody. Let's get into this. Let's go to Hebrews. Right after Titus. Hebrews chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. Ch Ch Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. God, who at sundry times, or in many, many times, and in divers manners, many ways, uh, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. Now, you, now you remember, we're joint heirs with Christ, all right? Who hath appointed heir of all things, amen, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. I'm not done yet. Verse 4, being made so much better than the angels, as, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So now, he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. What are we talking about? We have as our inheritance the name of Jesus. Come on. The name of Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2. Verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Verse 8, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God, Come on, pay attention. Verse 9 through 11. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We have inherited, we have received as an inheritance, the name of Jesus. And we can use that name. That's why I say we don't have to wait till the sweet by and by. We have been given the right to use that name now. Go to Mark chapter 16. Hallelujah. 
Glory to Jesus' name. Mark chapter 16. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm, verse 9. Uh, verse 9. Glory to Jesus' name. Mark 16, verse 9. Now, when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had, ca he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive, and had been seen of her, believed not. Verse 12. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them, as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue, or the rest of them. Neither believed they him. They didn't believe either. All right. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven. Talking about his apostles as they sat at meat or at dinner and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed, believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Mm-hmm. And these signs, pay close attention, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So based on this, the name of Jesus as our inheritance. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. He says, in his name, we will cast out devils. And we do that. Amen. In his name, we speak with new tongues. And we do that. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We lay In his name, we lay hands on the sick. Glory to God. And they do recover. Praise the Lord. We've been given as our inheritance the, the right to utilize the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And let's go back to Hebrews uh, chapter 1. We give you praise, Lord. Mm -mm -mm. You ready? Um, let's look at verse 13. Hebrew chapter 1, verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Verse 14, this is where we're going to be. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Come on, somebody. Ministering spirits, talking about angels. Amen. So really what we want to look at is the fact that we are heirs of salvation. That's part of our inheritance. As we are heirs of salvation. But if you look closer, there was something else he was saying. Uh, we have received, uh, well, God has uh, assigned to our lives his angels, ministering spirits. Amen, glory to God. Hallelujah. So when we speak forth the word of God, the angels of God, they go forth to minister to you and I need. Amen. Our needs. Amen. So uh, another part of our inheritance is salvation. We are heirs of salvation. Now, Pay close attention, church. This word salvation, the Greek word for salvation is soteria. So when we study the, the doctrine of salvation, it's called soteriology. Soteriology. So the word salvation is soteria. Now, that word means deliverance, Preservation, 
safety. He who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shell. Safety, health, beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. It means to be saved. It means to be rescued. Come on, somebody. He redeemeth thy life from destruction so that your youth is renewed as the eagle. Amen. Uh, it means uh, it's letting us know that God delivers believers out of destruction into God's safe place. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run therein and they are safe. Amen. It means the name the, the salvation means prosperity. Come on. It means prosperity. The thief comes not but to steal, kill and destroy. But I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Amen. Salvation. And it's talking about right now, deliverance. Somebody say deliverance. Preservation. Come on, somebody. They end, the, the Bible says you're supposed to be like green olive, olive trees flourishing in the courts of our God. Preservation, safety, health. It means to save. It means to be rescued. Praise God. God rescued. Amen. Uh, we used to sing a song. He, uh, uh, he took me out of the miry clay. He put my feet on a rock to stay. Y'all know that song. Amen. It means to be rescued. I mean, it, talk, it, talk, it speaks to God's, de how God delivers the believers out of the destruction and into his safe place. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus name. Now let's go to Hebrews chapter five. Glory to God. Mm, 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 mm. Verse 8, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Come on, somebody. And being made perfect, come on, and being made perfect, he became the author, the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. The NIV reads this way. Of That's Hebrew chapter 5, verse 9. The New International Version says, And once made perfect, he became the source. Come on. He became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. We're talking about part of our inheritance is salvation. That's our inheritance. Come on, somebody. That's your inheritance in Jesus' name. Let's keep it moving. Let's go to chapter 6 of Hebrews. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Chapter 6, uh, verse 9. But beloved. Come on. But beloved. We are pers persuaded better things of you. And things that accompany what? Salvation. Uh, amen, somebody. Though we thus speak, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Come on, somebody. In other words, you did it in the past and you're still doing it. You do minister. And we desire, verse 11, and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence. Keep ministering to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Don't give up. Verse 12, pay attention. That ye be not slothful. Come on. That you be not slothful, you be not sluggish, but followers of them, imitators of them, who through faith, and patience inherit the promises. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So what we're seeing here is another part of our inheritance is we inherit the promises of God. Let's keep reading. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by his own self. Or by himself, saying, surely blessing, I will bless thee. Come on. And multiplying, I will multiply thee. 
Verse 15, and so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep reading. Uh, for men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Come on, all disputes. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise. That's you and I. We are the heirs of promise. Come on. Mm, 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 I felt it. More abundantly, more willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise. Look what it says. The immutability of his counsel. The immutability. The immutability. What does he mean by immutability? It's talking about the unchangeableness. The unchangeableness of his promise, of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. Come on, immutability. When somebody's a, when something is, is a mutant, that means it's changed. It's from its original, amen, created design. Amen. It's a mutant. It, it mutates. It changes. But the word of God, God's promises unto us as the heirs of promise. Come on, somebody. His word is immutable toward us. It is confirmed. He swore by his own. So because there's nothing greater to swear by. Come on, somebody. Look what verse 18 says. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie. Why is it impossible to God for God to lie? Because when there was nothing, God said it was something. God said, let there be light. And the Bible says, and there was light. Come on, somebody. It's impossible for God to lie. Come on. In which it was impossible God to, to lie. To We might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge. He's our safe place. Come on. Uh, fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. That's why it's important. Our, what we purpose through this teaching this series of teaching is to renew our mind so we can see, not just talk about, but see ourselves. Come on, as heirs of God. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. We have an anchor for the soul. What is the soul? The seat of the mind, the will, the emotions, and the intellect to know this thing, both sure and steadfast. Come on, somebody. And which entereth unto that within the veil. Come on, somebody. We give God the praise for all of that. Amen. So we inherit the promises of God. We are heirs of promise. Come on. We are heirs of promise. Bless God. Hallelujah. Go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I, I receive it. Uh, we're going to start reading from verse 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith. When it says like precious faith, it's talking about the same kind of faith. It's talking about, it's, it, it, it's saying there, there is an expectation that you and I walk in, possess, come on, experience the same kind of faith they did that have obtained like precious faith with us. See, Peter is saying, come on, even though they walk with Jesus physically, he is writing saying, he's saying, it, it is possible for you and I, even though you're out of our time, out of our era, come on somebody, it's still possible for you through these writings through your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, through your knowledge of the Lord. Keep watch me keep going. Watch this. I'll start off starting over again. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Come on. He's saying we should there is there is the potential. 
He's saying there is the capability. Come on, somebody. He's saying it is possible for you and I to have this walk in the same faith they walked in. Come on. Like pressing faith. The same. Look at verse 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. How do we get it? Through the knowledge of him that hath caused, called us to glory and virtue. Keep it pushing. Verse 4. Whereby are given unto us. Look what it says. Whereby are given. Not will be given. Not shall be given. Not gonna be given. But where at, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. We are the heirs of the promises of God. Promises that by these you might be what? Partakers. What do you mean partakers? Participators. Experiencers uh, of the divine nature. Having escaped. Come on, somebody. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Praise the Lord, my God. Hallelujah. We have been given exceeding great and precious promises. Let's go to the book of Acts. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. 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 The book of Acts, chapter 20. Thank you, Father. I receive. I receive. I believe I receive. I believe I receive. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 28. Acts chapter 20. Verse. Wait a minute. Uh, 27. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Hmm. Take heed, take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God. He's talking to the pastors. Come on, the leaders. Feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Come on, somebody. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves, grievous wolves, Enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. Also of your own selves shall men arise. He says, some of y'all shall speak perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Most of the time when you have a church split, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Verse 32, and now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you what? An inheritance, an inheritance, to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. Amen. We inherit the promises of God, y'all. Praise the Lord. Glory to give it to us. It's promised to us. Amen. Glory to God. Now, let's go to one more uh, place. Amen. Let's go to the book of Revelation. Glory to Jesus' name. The book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 21. Mm, mm, mm. Woo! Glory to Jesus' name. This is the second last chapter in the Bible. Revelation chapter 21. Amen. For, since we're close to ending, I'm going to go ahead and start at verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true 
and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh, watch this here. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. This scripture lets us know that when everything is said and done, and when there is a new heaven and new earth, we shall inherit all things. Come on, somebody. The New King James Version reads this way. And this is uh, Revelation 21, verse 6 through 7. And he said to me, it's done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. That's why we endeavor to overcome. That's why we endeavor to overcome, to be, to walk in that overcoming power. We endeavor to be more than conquerors. Come on. The, the new international version reads this way. He said to me, it's done. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious, come on will inherit all this. Come on. And I will be their God and they will be my children. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, one point of notation. After verse 7 is verse 8. And it's, <laughs> listen to that. And it reads this way. But the fearful and unbelieving. Come on. The fearful and the unbelieving. The cowardly and the unbelieving. And the abominable. Those who do abominable things, abominations. And murderers. Come on. And whoremongers. The sexual immoral people. See? And sorcerers, go those who function with witchcraft. And idolaters, those who are not faithful to God, but worship other things. And all liars. Come on, you better be telling the truth. There was a, used to be a show on when I was a kid, it used to be called To Tell the Truth. Shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That sounds like a good place to segue into my closing. Beloved, all of these promises that we've outlined, come on, from the Old Testament last week and the New Testament this week, belong to the believers. Come on, belong to the believers. This is our stuff. Come on, this is our blessing. This is our inheritance. Perhaps, but the ones who have not received Christ as their Savior, don't be deluded in your mind. This does not belong to you. Not at all. What belongs to you if you have not received Christ as your Savior is what I just read in verse 8. But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, listen to Pastor Cecil. There's a way you can escape all of that. And it is by placing your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Based on the way the world is going, I want to, uh, to, to encourage you 
to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior now. Perhaps you don't know how to do it. I'll help you. There's a simple prayer. And it's based on what the Bible says. The Word of God says, if we believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord and that he's been raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit, if we confess what we believe in our heart, we will be saved. We shall be saved. So I want to help you to do that. If you just repeat this simple prayer after me. Say this, Father, it is written in your word. It's a prayer. Father, it's written in your word that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that you have raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Therefore, Father, I confess that Jesus is my Lord. I make him Lord of my life right now. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. I renounce my past life with Satan and I close the door to any of his devices. I thank you, Lord, for forgiving me of all my sins. Jesus is my Lord and I am a new creation. Old things have passed away and now all things become new in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, beloved, if you prayed that prayer by faith and you believe what you prayed, I want to welcome you to the family of faith. Amen. The household of faith. Praise God. You, you and I are now brothers. And if you're a woman, you and I, you're my sister and I'm your brother. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus name. Now, what I recommend you do is get yourself, uh, go uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, get yourself, associate yourself with a Bible believing church, a church where they preach the truth, where you feel the love of God and they allow the Holy Spirit of God to move. We would love to have you. Amen. My name is Pastor Clifford Sessom. Our church is Bethesda Revival Center. We're located in the city of Riverside at 16681 Wood Road. Amen. About a half mile down the road from Van Buren Boulevard. Praise the Lord. Amen. Say God bless to you. Amen. Also, tomorrow we will be praying. Those of you that need prayer, we want you to send in your prayer requests. Let us know. You can... Put them in there right now through Facebook Live. And we'll be interceding at 12 noon. Amen. Via our Zoom teleconference. Thursday we'll be we'll be putting food, picking up food and everything like that. And we hope to see everybody at church on on Sunday, which begins at 11 a.m. Well, that's all I have, beloved. Amen. On behalf of myself, First Lady Renee Sesson, we love you. We miss you and can't wait to see you face to face. And this is how we do it. Let the words of my mouth, repeat it, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, and let the church say, amen. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Bye-bye. See you next time.